In this exercise, you're going to attempt to come up with a Nyquist plot based on the Bode plot. You probably noticed a pattern in our previous exercises where in order to draw the Nyquist plot, we had to identify the magnitude and the phase of the transfer function at some strategic points. Those strategic points that really helped us derive the Nyquist plot were the points where we crossed the imaginary axis and the real axis and, of course, for the value of frequency at zero and infinity. We can clearly see here that at the points where we cross the real axis, the phase at those points is zero and 180 degrees, which can be seen in the Bode plot as well. We can also see that at the points where we cross the imaginary axis are those where the phase is 90 degrees and negative 90 degrees, which is also shown in the Bode plot. In fact, the Nyquist plot and the Bode plot show the exact same information. But in the Nyquist plot, we remove the information about frequency. The frequency is what allows us to put all these points here in one single line. But if you take a point in the Nyquist plot anywhere and you draw a line towards the center, we know that at this distance is the magnitude of the transfer function, and this angle is the phase of the transfer function. So when you look at a Nyquist plot and you look at a, at a Bode plot, we are actually looking at the very same information, except that in the Nyquist plot, the frequency is not shown. And in the Bode plot, we have both the function and magnitude as a function of the frequency. So if we analyze the Bode plot properly, we should be able to come up with a Nyquist plot. All right, so let's now do the same and let's look for the same points we were looking for in the analysis we did in the previous exercises. The first one is when the frequency tends to zero. If you look at the Bode plot, we see that when the frequency tends to zero, we can identify the phase of the transfer function being at zero. If you look at the phase plot, for very low frequencies, the phase tends to zero. And the magnitude of L of S tends to a given number. And that number here has a negative magnitude in decibels. The magnitude of the transfer function is somewhere in the negative range of dBs. What does that mean? We can't really tell what it is from the Bode plot, but we know that it's negative. If it's negative in decibels, we know that the magnitude of this transfer function must be smaller than one. If you take the log of anything smaller than one, we get a negative number. And anything greater than one gives us a positive number in decibels. So because the magnitude is negative in dB, that means that in the regular scale, this magnitude must be less than one. And you see where I'm going with this. This will tell us if you are to the left or to the right of the, this negative one on the Nyquist plot. In the analysis we did before, we were looking for imaginary and the real axis crossings. So now let's look at the point where we cross the imaginary axis on the negative side here. If we look at this part of the imaginary axis, then the phase is negative 90 degrees. We are aligned here. Now let's look at the Bode plot where the phase is negative 90 degrees. So we draw this line from negative 90 degrees to the point where we intersect the phase plot, go up and look at the magnitude. So if you call the magnitude when omega tends to zero L1, and now we look at what we get here when the phase is negative 90 degrees, we see that we are very close to the magnitude we had before, it's slightly lower, but the magnitude at this point, let's call that a magnitude two, is approximately the magnitude one. But now the phase changed to negative 90 degrees. Now let's go on and go to negative 180 degrees. When the phase is negative 180 degrees, what is the magnitude? Let's call the magnitude here L3. We can do the same, trace a line from negative 180 to the intersection with the phase plot, go up and look at the magnitude. The magnitude now starts to decrease and we don't know exactly the value, but it will be smaller than L2. 
so let's say, that is smaller than the magnitude L2. We can now keep on increasing the frequency and see where this is going beyond negative 180 degrees. We can look at what 270 degrees. The problem here is that there is no point on the Bode plot where the Bode plot actually crosses negative 270 degrees. It tends to negative 270 degrees. So our point number four, here I call it point one, two, three. The next point will be the point where the frequency tends to infinity. What happens when the frequency tends to infinity? Oh, well, clearly, if you look at the phase, as the frequency tends to infinity, the phase tends to negative 270 degrees. It doesn't exactly cross 270 degrees, it tends to. What happens to the magnitude? The magnitude tends to, if you now go up, tends to negative infinity dB. You see that as the frequency increases, the magnitude goes down and tends to negative infinity dB. In a non-decibel scale, this means that this number is tending to a very small number. The same analysis we did here. We deduced that because we had a negative dB number, we are at negative 1. Now we still have a negative dB, but a much, much slower. If we now take 20 log of a very small number, that is the only way we tend to negative infinity. So the magnitude in non-dB scale is 0. The magnitude of the transfer function is tending to 0. And again, 20 log of a very small number tending to 0 is what gives negative infinity decibels. Here we have the four points. Now you can place them on the Nyquist plot. Starting with point 1. We know that the phase is zero, so we are on the positive real axis. We know that the magnitude is smaller than one, so I place number one here and number one there for reference. And we should be sitting around here. Now to the left of one, because you know that the magnitude is less than one. This is our point one. We can now look at point two here. Point two, the phase is negative 90 degrees. So we are on the negative imaginary axis. The phase is negative 90 degrees. The magnitude is almost the same magnitude as case one. So we should be around here. This distance and this distance are pretty much the same. Now we can look at point three and point three is very critical because we are at negative 180 degrees. So we are on the negative real axis. What is the magnitude? The magnitude here, because we look at the body plot, we deduce that that is, is smaller than this magnitude and is smaller than this magnitude. We don't know exactly where, but there is a critical information here. The critical information is that this magnitude is smaller than one. So we should be to the right of negative one on the real axis. Again, look at the body plot. If you take the negative 100 degree phase line, intersect the phase plot, go up, we see that the magnitude of the body plot at that frequency is negative in decibels. Because it's a negative decibel value, the actual magnitude of the transfer function in a non-decibel scale is less than one. On the body plot, that is critical because that tells us that we are to the right of negative one. So this is now our point number two, and this is our point number three. Now let's move on to point four. Point four is when the frequency tends to infinity. We are tending to an angle of negative 270 degrees, so we are on the positive imaginary axis. The phase tends to negative 270, but the magnitude tends to negative infinity dB or zero in non-decibel scale. So we are tending to zero. We are on the imaginary axis, tending to zero, we are here. So we now need to go to that point following a negative 270 degree asymptote. How do we do that? Now we can connect these points. From point one to two to three, it's easy. There's no mystery here. What happens now? Now we need to go to point four, but we need to go to point four following this specific angle, negative 270 degrees. So we need to go up and down like that. 
and you can infer the direction of rotation on the body of the Nyquist plot if you follow now the increasing frequency direction. See, as we travel along this line, the frequency is going from zero to infinity. Because we know that the Nyquist plot is symmetric with respect to the real axis, we can do this. And here we have the completed Nyquist plot for that function. What can we conclude from this analysis? Is this system closed loop stable or unstable? Ah, it depends on the value of k. Do we have any unstable poles or zeros in the open loop transfer function? No. So p equals to zero. And you know that the number of unstable poles is z equals to p plus n. For a certain range of k, we are to the left of negative 1. There are no encirclements of negative 1. n is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. The system is closed loop stable. If you now increase k, this point will shift and eventually go to the left of negative 1. And then the Nyquist plot will encircle negative 1 twice in the clockwise direction, p will become 2, z becomes 2, the system has two unstable closed loop poles for a certain range of k. And now the system becomes unstable. If you multiply this function by a certain value k, then this point, the Nyquist plot moves or expands to the left. What happens to the body plot? The phase doesn't change. But the magnitude now shifts upwards. And will shift upwards, this value here will become positive. Because this value here will become positive, then the magnitude of our transfer function will become greater than 1. And then we are to the right, to the left of negative 1. Everything makes sense together. Now let's just look at the root locus of the system to make sure that our analysis makes sense. For this particular example, we don't need to calculate the value of k. We did that in the previous exercise. So let's just make sure that this is in agreement with the root locus. All right, so now let's attempt the root locus. We have two poles at negative 2. And we have one pole at negative 10. There are no zeros. So you have three asymptotes going to infinity, one going at an angle of negative 180 degrees, and two going at an angle of 60 degrees. If you do the centroid of the asymptotes, it should be somewhere around here. And here we have the other asymptote going to negative infinity. So clearly the only solution to this problem is that this pole, these two poles go to the asymptotes at 60 and negative 60 degrees, and this pole goes to negative infinity. Now, is this in the agreement? with the Nyquist plot. Yes, it's the same behavior. We concluded in the Nyquist plot that for a certain range of k, we would have no unstable poles, and past that range, we would have two unstable poles. This is exactly what we see here. For a, for a certain range of k, we are to the left of the imaginary axis, no unstable poles. For past a given value of k, now we cross into the unstable region, and you have one two unstable poles for the root locus and the Nyquist plot display the very same information and they are in perfect agreement.